Chris said, he represents wines from McLaren Vale. Good little story. Why McLaren Vale? How did you get there? How did you get to McLaren Vale from Glastonbury, Connecticut? Um, my wife and I, and actually my, my two children, uh, we went to uh, Australia for a six-week vacation, and included in that six-week vacation was a wedding. My cousin was getting married, and uh, so my whole family was heading over. Uh, my wife and I decided that my wife's a teacher and she decided that she would take the summer off and she wouldn't tutor or anything like that. And we would just take off and do the summer trip of, of Eastern Australia. So me being a, a semi wine buff as, as an ex lobbyist and, or, and a, a government relations guy, um, you know, basically we're known as eaters and drinkers. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're kind of the sharks of the world. Uh, besides lawyers, we're sharks. Um, and and so when uh, we, we were at the wedding or before the wedding, we we, we toured uh, a, a lot and a lot of wineries. We we enjoyed the wine. We we tried the wines. We we were looking for uh, something different than we can get in the U.S. So we only really toured the boutique wineries in Eastern Australia, uh, Southeastern Australia, and um, we kept on asking, "Where can we get these in the U.S.? Where can we get them?" And ninety percent of them said, "No, we're too small. We we, we don't we don't you know export." Interesting. So, you know, thinking nothing of it, and, you know, I'm still employed back home and everything's good. Uh, we go to the wedding. The day after the party of the wedding, we brought a bottle of uh, uh, Barossa Valley wine, which was uh, um, Elderton Command, which I consider a very good wine. And we brought it to this after party. And this uh, little Scotsman by the name of Murray Reed, uh, he's about all five foot two, started talking to my wife. And the next thing I know, he's pointing his finger at her. And I, I come over and said, what's going on? And then she said, well, he needs to talk to you, you know. And I said, why? She goes, he's yelling at me because I brought a Barossa Valley wine to a McLaren Vale party. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't believe you ever would have done that. <laughs> oh, and if, well, I didn't know the, 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 uh, the ethics of it all. Let's put it that way. And, and so um, I kind of walked away, and they still were talking. And the next thing I know, she's pointing at me again and so murray comes walking over to me and murray sits down and says uh you know we need to talk i said why and he goes well carolyn says that you know you're a lover of wine how do we get the mclaren vale wines over to the u.s boy oh boy two and a half hours later i hired him i said okay you're our first employee now this goes back how long does it take entrepreneurs to make decisions Bam. I mean, it is a quick Well, it was step. an instant. It was two and a half hours of talking about reputation, about how the Americans have all stiffed the, the Australians over in the West Coast, how um, the wines weren't getting uh, maximum exposure, how they weren't being advertised, how they the wineries were too small, uh, they were too boutique to get the, the, the great product over. Everybody was used to the Yellowtails of Australia, the Lindemans, the Penguins. All the wine that, that really made Australia a, known as a wine nation, but the quality of that wine is, is leaves something to be desired. And uh, so one of the things that, that when Murray and I were talking was, you know, the one thing that we have to do is get quality because quality sells itself. And uh, so what happens two and a half months later, um, Murray, well, Murray basically said, you know, you go think about it. <laughs> you go home and really think about it. Two and a half months later, I was back in Australia, and we were talking to winery owners. And we signed up eight initial wineries, and uh, the business, we said, okay, we'll sign up. And then it took us 11 months to get through all the paperwork uh, from the, the Australian government and the U.S. government and the state of Connecticut. And in November of 2008, or, or actually, excuse me, July of 2008, I bought my samples which was unheard of. In now, this industry. is all funded out of your own... It's all uh, funded out of my own pocket. They no. did an estate. Yeah, well, my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> my wife wasn't too thrilled with it, the whole thing at that point in time, but uh, uh, she backs me 100%. And uh, so I, what I did was I bought $15,000 worth of samples. Uh, I arranged for them to be shipped over here. And then uh, Charles from Charles Fine Wine uh, here in Glastonbury sat down, and we would go through periodically a bottle a day or two bottles a day and try this wine to find out what was good about it, what would sell in the U.S. market. And he was like my sounding board, and it worked out very, very well. And um, then we got our first shipment in November of 2008, and 
I was still doing some government relations at the point. I was selling wine. I was delivering wine. I was invoicing. I was doing it all by myself out of a little thousand square foot uh, warehouse here in Glastonbury. And uh, we, we worked really, really, really hard. And my wife said, you know, you're working 20 hours a day. You can't do this anymore. So I hired a couple salesmen, uh, and that's blossomed now into nine. Now, sales. this is where I was really attracted to Chris's business philosophy, because in the article, he said, I'm not here to sell you wine. I'm here to share my wine with you. Nah. It's not about selling. It's about sharing. And that, that business philosophy directs his whole approach. Absolutely. I mean, if you taste this wine, if you look at this wine here, I mean, first of all, that's a gorgeous looking wine. It's clear. It's crisp. I don't have to sell that wine. If the minute you look at that wine, the minute you taste that wine, you know, like Caitlin, you got a you got a massive thumbs up, and <laughs> and and that's what we're looking for is, you know, our wines don't we don't sell them, we share them, and uh, currently we're now in 400 uh, package stores across the state, we're in over 60 restaurants, uh, you know, the, some of the bigger names in Connecticut in the restaurants and. Uh, we're growing every single day, and uh, we've had over 100% growth over the last two years. 